Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back. I'm Chihuahua Queen and welcome to my second full video. Thank you so much for helping reach my goal of 50 views and 3 likes on my first story time video. You guys are awesome. Today's game is Sonic Advance 2 because recently it was the 30th anniversary of Sonic and why not celebrate with a little game? By the way, I died a million times thanks to Sonic's useless butt. She's the Chow is the real hero. The entire franchise should be about him. Why can't the Chows just be trained to fight against Eggman? Anyways, today's story topic is about the strangest people I've faced. Part 1, maybe. Let's just yap to it. In the early 2000s, I had the weirdest adventures. I used to live in a fairly sized city with a huge diversity of people of different backgrounds and I had some peculiar encounters with some of those people. At the age of 4 years old, I had this supposed friend. I don't remember her name, but she was a blonde girl with a bit of an attitude. My young attention seeking all about me baby self thought that we were the bestest of friends. And I was really bossy and cared about appearances, which had me prefer her for her hair color. I'll be honest, I was pretty shallow. I mean, what four-year-old isn't? I believe her and I met through an acquaintance of my parents, but either way, after what happened later on, I could see why they never kept up with each other anymore. So continuing on, since I used to live in the somewhat hood years ago, my parents were poor and they sometimes have me come over to other trusted adults' homes or have my friends to come over to keep me company. If you were or are poor and live in the somewhat hood, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mostly with poor parent problems, laundromats, going to a corner store for some little cheap snacks to feed the family, walking a few miles to purchase a tank of gas. That's all I can remember to be honest. It could be worse. So anyways, once we finished hanging out, I wanted to tag along with her. Uh, let me throw out this fact that I was a person that really loved to snoop in houses like little kids like to do. Or is it just me? <laughs> but mostly I was curious about housing design and architecture. Yeah, I could have studied to become an architect. <laughs> and I begged her to bring me to her house. She was so annoyed, but then she stopped frowning and then smirked. At the moment, I thought she just felt apologetic for daring to reject me, the queen, and must waste her energy on me. Which is why she smiled. But oh no. No, 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 no. That smirk was not a sweet, innocent little girl smile as I misinterpreted it to be. It was probably at 8 at night in either spring or summer because I know I wasn't cold and the sun was at its final moments of setting. I had no friggin' idea how I was brave enough to be walking at night and walking a good distance to get her home with just the two of us and no trusted adults. As we were walking, we began to talk and she appeared to be pretty annoyed by me. I then inconsiderately asked her what her house was like and what her parents looked like. Random annoying questions any four year old would come up with. She then smirked and replied, My daddy is bigger, badder, and tougher than your dad. She laughed and spewed, Your daddy is a loser. He is so skinny and wimpy. Okay, alright, you do not diss my dad. Even, even if he has his flaws, no one insults him except me and my mom. I was fuming, and like your typical impulsive four-year-old, I then dissed her and her family, calling them all ugly, saying she thought she was better than me because she was white, I'm Latina, and dang I was woke back then. And well, she got caught off guard when I mentioned her when I mentioned race, and she full-blown denied she thought she was superior. But I just shook my head and continued spewing everything you'd do in order to ruin a friendship. Take note, this all happened while we were walking and we were almost arriving to her house. It got quiet after the arguing, so the last three minutes we just walked with arms crossed and pouts on our faces. When we finally arrived, she knocked on her door while I waited awkwardly a couple meters away. And then a man who appeared to be in his 30s opened the door and had this scowl on his face. And he was unfit. Not fat, but definitely not fit. He had a gut. And he was obviously shirtless because it was pretty hot and humid like it is right now. Oh snap, what if this happened 19 years ago today? He basically kind of looked like the guy that would play the jerk in those Darman videos with the same demeanor and all. But about a decade or two younger. Oh my gosh, what if that's actually him? Looking back, he wasn't that scary looking or ripped at all. 
He just had this gut and this temper that advertised him as strong and scary in a kid's eyes. And yeah, obviously I was scared. I mean, if I saw him again, I'd be kind of scared, mainly because I'm pretty short and literally cannot fight a man. But I'd see him as an ankle biter. But yeah, he was a bit more filled compared to my dad. So he asked her what was happening because he saw the both of us were very upset and then she told on me telling him everything and just glared at me evilly. With the one second exception of an expression of sympathy when she mentioned the racism topic. While she smirked as of telling me, you're screwed, he ended up just looking at me in disgust and then got dis defensive of his home property, as he should. But then he took it to another level. He announced he was going to grab something and wanted me gone or else, and then slammed the door behind him as my now former friend just smiled and told me he was going to beat me to bits. I don't know if you have ever seen this one TikTok that goes My daddy's got a gun, my daddy's got a gun, my daddy's got a gun. Yeah, literally pretty hardcore resemblance of that. And I just felt my ego and pride get crushed when she taunted me like that. And I also got really, really scared. While those emotions were tornadoing in my head, he opened the door lightning speed as he wielded a baseball bat, making an aiming gesture and grunted, I told you to get out of here. I tried to defend myself by screaming, I'm only a little girl, you can't do that to a sweet little girl. That made him angrier, and he didn't even give a count of a three. He literally was just swinging it and I was running. I freaking ran. I get to the sidewalk and I turn around for a nanosecond just to stick my tongue out at the two and resume running away. And to make things harder, it was already dark. And one of the neighbors had their guard dogs out, and as a little girl, I was so scared of big dogs. And those dogs didn't help overcome that fear. I ramble a lot, I'm so sorry. As I got home, my dad was already there and I didn't trust my dad at the time, and my mom was already at her night shift at her job at the time, so I lied to him that everything was Gucci, and I went to bed thinking everything would blow over. But no, ha 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 ha. My mom woke me up the following morning absolutely furious. And I tried to explain with my crappy explanation on how I should be canonized into sainthood. She pulled out a telephone from behind her back and she dialed the number of my former friend's house and passed the phone to me. I knew the drill. I had to say I was sorry. I gulped and waited for the guy to answer, but instead it was her. I was surprised and asked her why her dad wasn't on the line. And then she just responded that she never wanted to talk to me or play with me ever again. I deserved it and didn't argue back, but I was super relieved. My gosh, her dad was cuckoo. My parents told me that her dad was faking it, but I don't know about that. Little me was just not having it. It felt very real. I honestly question, well, did she, she did have such an attitude a lot of the times and was a bit of a, I don't know how to describe it, a diva? I guess that's, that's the best way I can describe it. But who, honestly, who knows how her home environment was. Her dad did not really look too stable. I feel like he was trying. I feel like he was just really trying, but um, you know, a, a person's got its limit. I, I do hope she's okay now. I hope she's in a better place in her life, in a better position, and I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna say like it's not like we're gonna meet each other once again and be like, hey, do you remember that crazy moment? Oh yeah, I'm like yeah, we're 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 Gucci now. I, I don't think that's how life works, but. <laughs> so the next story I have is when I was in second grade. I already moved to a safer neighborhood by then, and so there was this girl, and the beginning of the school year was the start start of our interaction. Her personality was of a spoiled snobby girl, like me even though she had above average manners and patience, unlike me, but only did so at her own convenience. That's where the convenience, convenience part hits because boy, did she have some sociopathic-like tendencies. So I've always been slightly below average in intelligence and I have my anxiety to think for making me make the most irrational choices back then. Yes, I was worse back then. She was that person that wanted to be the adult. You know, those kids, right? Kind of interfering with other kids with what's right or what was wrong or sort of bossy. Well, she was definitely one of those. 
Every time she wanted to get involved with an activity in a group, she would force herself into it without notice and will practically want the very best out of it, like if she were the Queen of England. She would act like she knew it all too. Even though it was kind of true, I hate to admit it, but we'll get, she would get so upset whenever she's corrected. Like, really upset. So did I, but it was a pretty normal level of upsetness. Maybe a little much, but she would get unbelievably and irrationally upset. She had friends, of course, but she was a self-proclaimed self friend of mine. Every morning she would come up to me and say hi, and would tell me about how her previous day went after school, and would pull me away from the other friends I was with. My other friends would just get mad at her and sometimes tell her she was being very possessive. But she would make the excuse that I needed her help 24-7 due to how incompetent I was. Anyway, there were times she was helpful because I could be a bit airheaded at times, but who isn't? I was simply just more controllable for her. And well, it was pretty insulting. By the way, she didn't call me straight up incompetent, more like I needed babying. Something along those lines. So, I don't know which came first, but one of the craziest things she's done was one morning, she walked up to me with a grim look on her face, and she repeated me, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, and I asked her if she was okay. Obviously, I was worried, and she looked up at me like she was going to cry, but I knew those, I, I knew those eyes of hers. She was pretending and was begging for attention. Apparently, over the weekend, her and her family went out for some road trip to some place, and something dangerous happened. I don't remember what happened, but I do remember very crystal clearly hearing that her hand was chopped off. Yeah, her hand got chopped off. No, 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 I am not done yet. She stuck out her perfectly fine hand right to my face and told me that the adult had to stick her hand back to her arm by using sticky tape. You heard me right. And she pointed her wrist, asking, See the line right there? It was a wrist crease. That's where the cut is, and the tape is around my wrist right now. There was literally no tape either. I mean, if you want to be convincing, at least wrap office tape around your wrist. She kept asking me over and over if I believed her. I'll be honest, she got me 1 16th of the way. And well, so I lied shamelessly with no guilt for the first time. I had this guilt problem and said, oh yes, I hope you get better. And she smiled and looked satisfied with the answer. And well, this wasn't the only over the top thing by her. I believe this was winter, but there was a period where she was absent more frequently. And then one day her and our teacher revealed that her father was dying. I don't remember what he died from, but it was a terminal illness he had and that she was going to hold a PowerPoint presentation dedicated to her father once he passed. And my thoughts went after her and her family and I obviously felt bad. It, it appeared her and her dad were really close and I felt happy, but also very sad for her because at the time I wasn't really close with my dad. By the way, we're inseparable now. And losing such an incredible dad must, must be the worst. So very quickly the day of the presentation came and she hosted the presentation slideshow with pictures, texts, and videos. And she talked about how proud she was of her dad and giving a mini biography and such. And even showed off the gift she received from him to remember him by. The gift was this pretty little lamp that was clear with an image etched onto it that lit up in multicolor lights. Those were really popular back in the early 2000s. But when she got further into the into the slides, I noticed the memorial was starting to get darker. I'm aware people cope in different ways, but I couldn't help but notice how cheerful she was and how she smiled like usual. She didn't sound sad, but kind of also melodramatic like she was faking it. Again, it was really hard to tell because people can actually mean it. Though she kept saying, my daddy bought me this before he died, like she was happier with what her dad left behind and just didn't seem to be bothered. And well, in her final or near the end of her slideshow, she showed a picture of her dying dad. He was posing trying to look happy, but he had an oxygen tank and looked incredibly thin. It was depressing, and well, it really made everyone in the classroom so freaking sad. I have no idea how the teacher allowed all that, but I was so disturbed by her reaction in the photo. And I don't think I was alone with my thoughts. To top it all off, she always 
had this unnerving, almost Joker-like smile. She just acted so innocent, but her smile was unhideable. I even have a group photo with her during a class party with her and her smile in it. One day, I told one of my close friends about her when she came over and I showed her the picture and her reaction was priceless. She replied, yep, sociopath confirmed. I just pray she hasn't snapped and ended up murdering someone ever in her life. Imagine getting killed by such a person and the last thing you see is an unnerving and twisted smile. Should I retitle this video as the craziest people I've ever encountered? So this will be it for now. The video is getting a little too long and editing will be a pain if it gets much longer. If you guys want a part two, be sure to leave a like and let's hope we can achieve 80 likes before the end of June for the next part. Sorry for not posting a full video last week like promised. I've been having health and personal issues, but the good news is I'm better managing my health and got two jobs that involve a lot of physical labor, so I was able to lose 10 pounds in two weeks. I'm just so honestly relieved because I was diagnosed with a liver issue recently and not getting fit worsens it. I also got some pretty big and cool news that involved my family's past, but that'll probably be another story time video in the long run. Have a great day everyone and I'll see you soon!